Alex Social here in some heritage castle in uh, the northwest of the United Kingdom. And today, when I drive from four week natural programs from, in this case, Oslo to London, it's so cool to stop and, and check out some of these incredible European heritage sites, go traveling, take photos, be creative, and so on. But today, I want to share with you a blog about the horrors of being a man in your 30s. I am the world's most experienced pickup coach. I've been coaching professionally for a big American company since I was 22 years old. Now, I'm 34 years old, and I've seen the development of you know, my game, my lifestyle, my expectations, my different approaches to pick up. And of course, I've coached students from the age of 22 up until 50 all around the world. So if you're a guy in your 30s, I want to explain to you some of the horrors and the difficulties that you're going to have to endure and overcome and, and how to overcome them. And then also the differences in the approach to your game when you're 30 versus when you're 20 or 25 or 27. There's some significant differences and some significant advantages, right? As the bees, the birds and the bees are chasing me around here, right? Um, and then of course, like from the girl's point of view, what is her expectation of a 30 year old guy or a 22nd, 27 year old guy or whatever? And then the great debate, the great details. These are like, this is God punishing me for talking about reproducing in a chapel. Right now we have like, we're in a chapel. <laughs> God is sending a swarm of bees to come and get me. And then that classic debate, uh, what type of guy are you going to be in what type of age group, what type of lifestyle, a lover or a provider? Okay, the, the boyfriend, the bee is actually on the lens now. <laughs> we'll keep it in the shot. I like the bees, just don't get the cameraman. The difference between taking the lover approach, the one I stand kind of guy, versus the provider approach, the slower, steadier, more reliable approach to, to results in your game in this, in this part of your life. Come on over, check this out. And, and how to apply that, traps that you want to avoid um, so that you can still be really effective in your game in your 30s, equally as much as when you're in your 20s, how to relate as a 30 year old to people who are nice work, who are a little younger as well. Check it out. Let the tour begin. So of course everybody wants to you know, have more intimate relationships or better quality of intimate relationships in this pickup game. And there's distinctly two ways to go about it. The, the kind of the slow dating approach, you call that the provider mode, kind of like go on a couple of dates, get to know somebody slowly, primarily through familiarity, rapport and sound judgment and decision making. Or the second route, which is kind of like the lover, right? Which is based on pure attraction, thrills, a little bit of irrationality, passion, uh, and spontaneity. So you've got the slow, steady, reliable mode, which is called uh, the provider, or the fast, passionate, risky, uh, not necessarily as rational uh, mode, which is like based on attraction, almost kind of like instant intimacy, which can work for some guys who are really, really attractive, or high status, or wealthy, or having a really good body, or they're really good looking. Now. The thing is, the big problem is, a lot of people, they don't, they don't get either. You're, n you're neither a good provider or a good lover. You're not attractive enough to, to create instant passion uh, and instant excitement that the girl would be so attracted that she wants to enter into an intimate situation with you. Or on the other hand, you may not be patient enough or cool enough or transparent enough to date a girl a couple of times and hold conversation for a couple of dates to actually be, uh, to, to form a relationship as a provider mode. And some people think that provider mode is a negative thing. I know Mystery used to say, you should never buy girls drinks, never take them to dinner. You're allowed to do that kind of thing. That, that works as well. But the, the thing that I want to draw your attention to today is that when you're in your 20s, when people are traveling or studying or um, you know partying, drinking, doing, having that kind of thing, people will you know hook up and enter into moments of intimacy the hook up uh, based on attraction and thrill and just no responsibility mode, okay? When you're you know, 22 to 26, that kind of thing can happen. But when you're 27 and above, women especially are gonna think a lot more thoroughly about who they're gonna enter into intimate relationships with, either quick and passionate ones or slower, 
uh, slower city a date type interaction. So as a 30 year old guy, me talking to you now, it's very likely that <clears throat> you're not doing the date thing properly and you're hoping that you're going to be attractive enough that the girl is going to think, hmm, I think I, I'd like, just like to sleep with this guy. I'd like to become intimate with this dude. And that's not how it works, okay? That's not how it works. It, it's strange now, and I want to reveal this, you don't even need to be that attractive, like sexually attractive or even you know physically attractive uh, or even that charismatic in order to enter into an intimate relationship through the provider mode as a, you know, a guy in your late 20s or early 30s, mid 30s. Because women aren't so much looking for straight up attraction. They're looking for a sound decision, really, really good companionship. But most of all, that inverted motivation that I talk about, they're looking to not be hurt, right? So for you out there watching this video, you might be thinking, you know, I wish I had whim a, a woman in my life. I wish I had a really significant relationship. And you're focusing on trying to make yourself attractive. But the actual answer is to make your is if you can make yourself someone who the woman is not going to fear being hurt by, right? So realize from the woman's point of view, I'm going to go, I'm going to approach this, uh, this topic from a couple of different angles. From the woman's point of view, imagine she's, you know, living life, traveling, partying, drinking, adventuring, and she does find herself entering into quite a few intimate relationships as, you know, a chick in her mid twenties, early twenties, even late twenties, and entering into some relationships with some people who she's like, passionately engage with. She's, you know, traveling, partying, having a good old time, living a passionate life at a young age and come on over here, cameraman. And she may enter into quite a few failed passionate relationships which really, really hurt her during that time. And then as, you know, the biological clock keeps ticking, uh, as she gets into her later thirties, she's gonna be much more sound of mind to decide who she wants to hook up with. And that's, that's totally fine as well, that the girl is going to, you know, be much more picky, take her time, go on a couple of dates, um, still have all the same, you know, passionate urges, but not act on them in the way that she might have done when she was younger. Also, as, uh, of course, as everyone gets older, women become a little bit more self-conscious about their physique, right? So they then like to take a little bit longer to make sure they bring their A game if they are going to get into an intimate situation. They want to be really, really well groomed and well presented and, and make sure they, they're feeling really good about themselves when they do make that move for intimacy. And that's still following the, the relationship, the provider kind of mode. So now we're here in Covent Garden in London, all the way down from Northumbria, famous here on the side of the street, and talking about how difficult it is to date when you're in your 30s. Now, when you, when you turn into your 30s as a guy, your mind plays weird tricks on you. You become, you, you, okay, so firstly, your body starts to decay, right? When you, when you switch past the age of 29, your cal the cartilage in your body calcifies, it becomes hard, and it makes it a lot harder to stay in shape because you injure a lot easier. So when you get into your 30s, you have the onset of dad bod, wrinkles, um, your muscles are not going to be as good, you can't train as hard, and you focus more on your career than you know your athleticism. You get much more career oriented. So it's strange because your body's going to get more awful, and oftentimes you're not as comfortable with your own body when you're into your 30s, but you also have a little bit more arrogance, which is funny. You feel a little bit more selfish and greedy and that's hormonal but at the same time you don't feel happy with your body so when you're interacting with women and trying to meet them and date them you think that you think that you deserve a lot but when it actually comes down to getting intimate you're not so happy with that and furthermore because by the age of you know 30 or so you're going to feel more like you're more selective you've had more life experience you can be more picky with the girls that you talk to but uh there's far less to pick from and your pickiness is going to be completely unfounded. So all of a sudden you've got arrogance, but you're unhappy with yourself and you think that you deserve a particular type of chick, uh, but you probably don't deserve that particular type of chick. And 
now from the, from the girl's point of view, they are entitled to be super picky uh, and super selective because by the time that they're into their mid 20s, late 20s or whatever, they're gonna already have had a lot of life experiences going to places like Vegas and Ibiza and uh, Mykonos in Greece where they get given everything for free by so many different guys. And the girls, you know, when they look at you as maybe the, the 15th or 20th guy that they're considering hooking up with in their life, considering sleeping with, they've had such a range of experiences and so many blessed experiences. Oh, we've got a construction site here just, just starting up that they have every right to be super picky. So we're starting to put this into an equation, right? You're 30, you're unhappy with your body, uh, you're probably unhappy with your career because in your 30s you're still you know, trying to grind out and make a name for yourself. Um, you feel arrogant, it's kind of a conflicting message. And then the pool of attractive women in, you know, you know, from 24 all the way up to your age is gonna be tinier and tinier because to be fair, a lot of them get snapped up at a really young age. They get married, they get into long-term relationships and women really love, they love to have a nest, to have a reliable man. You know, as they say, uh, a woman wants everything from one person and a man wants one thing from every person. Everyone's just gathering in the, uh, gathering in the, the vlog here. So a lot of the great, the, the most beautiful women, both, both most beautiful and smart women get snapped up. The, the pool of girls you can take gets really teeny tiny. And even the small teeny tiny pool, those women, you're, you're now competing with men who might be in their late 30s and 40s who can give them the world. Hotels, travel, fashion, money, support them. It's horrible. It's bloody horrible. Furthermore, in your 30s, when you're trying to date girls who are kind of like 24 up until, you know, their 30s, those women, they're much more uh, emotionally educated and emotionally experienced to know what they want and especially what they don't want. And what they don't want is to be hurt. And as, you know, young girls are going up, they're, they're living their life, they're dating, they're partying, and they're having emotional relationships with men, most of those previous emotional relationships that women have had are gonna result in the girl being hurt, uh, feeling embarrassed, feeling maybe used, feeling naive or stupid after the event. And that's, that's life, you know, we all have uh, lessons while we're, we're growing and learning about life. So when that woman, when that girl looks at you, the picky man who's arrogant, who uh, is dissatisfied with his own body, the girl is gonna think, this guy's just gonna hurt me. This guy's just here to hurt me. He's just trying to prove something to himself. He's trying to not be lonely as opposed to actually appreciating the girl for the girl. So think about this equation. All of a sudden it gets horrible and you gotta learn how to work with that. The thing is, it's actually easier to work with it and I'll explain that on the next location because a construction site has just popped up here around us. Cool. All right, so let's compare that to when you're, you know, you're in your early 20s and mid 20s. When, when we're all in our early 20s and mid 20s, the, the kind of like socializing rules and guidelines and methods that you've observed on how to meet and get to know and form relationships with girls. In, in your early 20s, you know, so many girls are gonna be uh, emotionally available because you know, they're, they're traveling, they're studying, they're moving around and they're not yet emotionally committed to one guy or another. So from your point of view, there's many, many, many options of girls to meet. And of course, when we're younger, we're all a little bit more athletically uh, inclined. We're a little less uh, nutritionally overloaded, okay? A little less, a little more athletic when we're younger, obviously. So what you've learned is that there's lots of different girls to talk to. You're happy with your body. They're happy with their body. And generally in our 20s, you know, we're all pretty naive, uh, adventurous, curious about uh, having new experiences, meeting new people, perhaps sleeping around, things like that. And that's, that's, that's life as well. We all want to have a rich, experience, uh, rich life experience in our 20s. Yeah. However, eventually, kind of the fun, the fun stops being fun. The novelty stops being a novelty of just sleeping around and hooking up with random girls and guys. It, it eventually expires. And then the girls are going to turn a corner and no longer just want to go out, go home with a random guy. So what you've experienced in the most part of your you know, early 20s and 30s at college while you're traveling, it is absolutely not the case as you get older and all of a sudden all of your, your reference points and your expectations and your experiences, they completely change. So you might go out, you know, having a professional job in a place like London or Melbourne, some of the places that we do for We Natural, and you think that you can just have a bit of fun, be a little bit naive, have a couple of drinks, be a little bit immature and silly, and sure, you can get 
some results and start hooking up or getting people to go on dates with, but those reference points are now skewed and wrong. The girls almost do a kind of a quantum leap. They might be young, curious, traveling, studying, and they may you know, indulge in some promiscuity with people they don't know very well. Then all of a sudden, the novelty wears off and they get invitations through clever uh, social networking from promoters and uh, travel influencers. And these girls can go from uh, you know, non-well-funded studying and traveling and where they're sleeping around and being kind of casual, then all of a sudden they get all these invitations to go to, you know, uh, holidays on yachts and they go to crazy sponsored private events that people can't even get into. And for the record, if you guys didn't know, it's all well and good to go out and meet girls in day game and at bars, but the very best place to meet, to meet girls uh, is at private events like uh, clothing label launches and restaurant openings and uh, 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 different like fashion weeks, uh, Formula One events, those type of events, uh, invitation only events are where you're gonna meet the most beautiful, single and social type of girls who are, uh, who are really open-minded to meeting a whole bunch of different people. They really enjoy their social life. They enjoy being footloose and fancy free, you know, to use a, uh, an old phrase. And that's the best place to actually meet girls. But the problem is what you know, your playfulness, what you know as a 20 year old guy meeting young, curious other people is all gonna go out the window because the girls make the quantum leap from curious mode to the red carpet. They basically get the red carpet and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you are at a complete loss to know what to do to meet these kind of girls. And I, I've really experienced turning that corner, right? Going from being, you know, I started coaching pickup when I was 20, 21 in uh, San Francisco back in 2006 I was and uh, and now I'm 34 so I've seen the entire gamut all the way through I want to explain to you what the kind of shifts that you need to understand and that you need to make the things to look out for and the things to avoid to start really mastering a different and empowered version of your dating life in your 30s this also goes for, for guys who are in their in their 40s as well but what you need to know is that if you with anything in life, if you invest your energy into the wrong place and in a misguided way, you're not going to get any results, you're not going to get any returns, you're not going to feel very happy, you're going to get super frustrated and that's only going to make you, for men, oftentimes turn to alcohol, turn to violence, turn to gambling, uh, can even turn to self-harm. So I really don't want that for any of the guys watching this channel. Let's go find a different view and talk about the, uh, the resolutions that can help you master your dating as you get more mature and as you get into your 30s and how to, how to connect with some of these girls who are living the red carpet life, some of the most beautiful girls that you might know uh, in your, in your social, social circle. You're competing with some pretty extreme odds. You've got some really bad, uh, you know, well, misleading reference points for your experience of meeting chicks when you're, you know, in your mid and early 20s at college, when you're traveling, and when people are kind of running around going, getting drunk every weekend at, at bars and whatever, and now, you need to do things a little bit differently. If you want to meet and date and have a really happy dating life in your 30s with some of the, the most beautiful women uh, that you might meet, you need to understand what women want. And, and I'm talking about girls who have a regular career, who've got life experience, they've been partying, um, they might have traveled the world a couple of times, and they might have had a lot of, a lot of experience with a lot of different men, okay? Imagine a really beautiful girl who's been given many, many options uh, throughout her, you know, her 20s and into her 30s. What does she want? What does she want in a partner? Now, everybody does like, uh, you know, stimulus, adventure, luxury, things like that. But with the answer to what do women want in the dating game, in their professional lives, the answer to that is they don't want pain. They don't want heartbreak. They don't want, uh, to be fucked over and they don't want to feel like they've been used or they don't want to feel like an achievement. And that's their kind of their, their defining factor as to how they decide who they're going to date, who they're going to spend time with and how it's going to happen. So here you are, you might be a regular average looking guy with a dad bod, with a, <clears throat> a white collar job. Oh, jump in, the, jump in the blog, why not? Speak Russian in my blog. Uh, you know, I have a dad bod, you know, regular white collar job. Uh, a regular apartment, nothing too special, regular social circle, that's all normal. I will tell you right now that women really, really, really want a nest. 
They want a nest. They want a place to call home. They want uh, consistency so that they can always have a place to escape to and relax in and escape the entire world. Now, I, as a, you know, a, a world experienced pickup coach, I've been traveling all over the world and dating girls all over the world. And the girls that I've dated and had long term, like I love you, like reciprocal I love you relationships, they hate the fact that I don't have a home. And I can't, I can't blame them. They, they need a place to be able to feel at home, to escape from the world, and to be able to you know, hug their, their partner every, <clears throat> every night of the week. But I can't provide that. And for that reason, all of my knowledge of dynamics and my indifference and my sense of entitlement, it doesn't count for a lot when it comes to actually forming a relationship. Great for meeting, uh, causing attraction, and getting to know somebody. But when it comes to actually getting that girl and getting a commitment, it doesn't really work. So if you understand that a girl who has who is very beautiful and she's partied around the world a whole lot, she um, would have definitely felt fallen in love a number of times, been really interested in uh, guys and opportunities. And these are the kind of guys who can provide them those opportunities, guys with money, guys from trust funds, guys who might be models, guys who have many, many options with many different girls. And those guys will happily sleep with 10 girls in a summer, will be sleeping with 10 girls at the same time. As they say, you know the 80-20 rule, 80%, 20% of the guys get the majority of the chicks and you are not the classically attractive guy. But your big advantage is that you're not actually gonna cause that girl pain. And yeah, it's funny to think that you might be working hard to make a shitload of money and to have a really, really good body and a really good network and have a luxurious life. But a girl is more motivated by not being emotionally destroyed by you as she has been in the past by you know promoters male models really really wealthy wealthy guys trust fund guys guys who uh, are at home at Ibiza Mykonos in Vegas and so all of a sudden you've got this advantage this crazy advantage I'm going to join the join the party you've got this crazy advantage that that the, the classically attractive uh, societally attractive guy doesn't have he will be sexually attractive, but you'll actually be emotionally attracted. Though, the process to actually make that happen is a little bit tricky, okay? You need to both create options for yourself and know how to be patient, all right? You gotta have a bit of attraction game as well. Have options, create a fear of loss, be the kind of guy who's not gonna hurt her, okay? I'll explain that in a second. Um, and, and know how to run the process in a, in a, with a kind of a longevity. Let's go to the next location and get right into that. So I was doing a boot camp in uh, drill and diagnosis in Edinburgh last week, and my my guy was 30 years old, similar kind of lifestyle like me. And in Edinburgh, I thought there was really a lot of really beautiful girls, uh, stylish, classy, uh, you know. And in, in cities like Edinburgh or uh, London or Paris or Melbourne or New York, these big metropolitan cities, where, girl, like, to be honest, if in, in this dating life. If you're a guy who's not living in one of the big metropolitan cities and you're living in a regional or a second tier city like, like Boston or Manchester or Brussels, you're in the wrong place. You're not gonna find some of the most attractive girls in the world. For a girl who, who's you know, intelligent, she's got a degree, uh, she hits the gym and she's been given options and had her confidence reinforced all of her life, she's gonna move to a place like London, live in a shoebox, be cozy and happy and have infinite opportunities every weekend and from so many different men. You need to be in a city like London or Melbourne or Sydney, one of the really big cities, to create options. Otherwise, your dating life is actually going to be pretty horrible. Okay? The guys that I have on all of my programs who live in even cities like Washington, DC, they want to move to cities like Austin, Texas, because that's where the options are going to be. That's where you're going to find the kind of girls that you're actually going to want to date you know, for the, you know, in your life. And you may then take a girl from a big city like London and you may move back to a smaller town like uh, Sacramento or somewhere like that, from LA back to Sacramento, have a homely life, and then the cycle repeats. Anyway, imagine you're living in a place like Edinburgh and there are some beautiful girls who they go to, they go to Ibiza regularly and uh, people fly them around and they get guest lists at the clubs every weekend. Those girls will honestly be attracted to 
the, the national rugby players or the promoters who go to the gym and do drugs and offer them drugs. They will be attracted to them. But the girls, remember, they're more motivated by not being bored and not being hurt than they are by getting laid by those types of guys. Maybe in their younger years they'll indulge that curiosity or maybe in a, in a moment of uh, regret they might do something intimate that they didn't really plan to or they got sucked into or whatever. So where do you come into this as the regular average guy who's trying to be more attractive? Well, if you can be, and I've seen this so many times, some of my most visually unattractive friends back at my home in Brisbane, they are just regular guys. And because, because my regular mates who might have like a big beer belly, uh, they don't think that they're in the same league as these like Abitha girls, Mykonos girls, Vegas girls. Because they don't think that, they don't have any, they're not even trying to please those girls. They don't worry about making mistakes or looking embarrassed. And because of that, they can be loud and expressive. They use the trinity, as we say. They can compliment the girl, tell the girl she's beautiful on an ongoing, easygoing, non-reaction seeking type of way. The third thing in the trinity, the second thing in the trinity, as some busker starts up behind us, I have duality of presence. I'm looking at the camera and I'm aware of what's going on around me. Shh. <laughs> Tell me if it gets too noisy, cameraman. The second in the Trinity is just talking a bit of smack, talking a bit of negs, talking a little bit trolling and teasing, stuff like that. The third thing is talking about future adventures projections. So that's sexuality, um, role playing, verbal, things like that. So basically, basically, if you're the average guy, if you're an I am enough guy and you're not a particularly special guy in terms of wealth or looks or luxury or access, and you compliment the girls in a very consistent, friendly way, if you also tease them, these beautiful girls, you basically friend zone these beautiful, beautiful girls who are in your demographic, who are light years ahead of you in terms of social popularity, but also you can use kind of we, we concepts. We'll get drunk this weekend. We'll uh, both quit our jobs next week. We both hate one of our friends or whatever. These kind of we concepts. We should go on a trip too. Uh, we should get married so that we can get citizenship in a different country. Some, that kind of thing. If you are a girl's best friend over a long period of time, but you can add the chemistry, the chemistry enough that in a friendly way, she's gonna test you and call you out. And if you, if you say things like, oh my God, you look smashing. Oh my God, my parents are gonna my parents would be so embarrassed if they ever met you. My, I would never date you, my friends would hate me. If you can use your range of emotions, but only act friendly and get emotionally close with this girl, even as Miss, Mr. Dad Bod, Mr. Not Perfectly Attractive, you're gonna get really close to these beautiful, beautiful girls who have been embarrassed and emotionally destroyed by players in the past, and they're gonna be very, very happy with a guy like you, right? It's it's very, very unusual. For some of my most confident students with really great bodies and a lot of access and a lot of wealth, I ask them to dull down their attractive effects so that they can be the kind of guys who would be less likely to cause the girl pain if she was to fall in love with him and then he turn his back, right? Him, him not be interested. So this takes on a couple of different facets as well. You want to both create a lot of deep relationships, be quite good at your attraction material, basically friend zone all the attractive girls that you know as a guy, you know, in your home social circle, meet a lot of them, act really friendly, like, act, act, like actually call them your friends. Say, use phrases like, I'm so glad you're a friend of mine, I'm so glad that we're, we're friends, I'm so glad that we don't have any chemistry. Use those phrases to allow openness and a, a, a huge exchange of emotion to, uh, transpire between you so that you can connect deeper and deeper, uh, form really good bonds so the girl can open up with you. Now the next step is, is not jealousy but fear of loss, right? So if you can be girl's best friend with these really attractive types of girls, not with one but with five or six, you're known to be a friendly, I just saw a cute girl, you're known to be friendly with all the really attractive girls, never making them uncomfortable, always making them laugh, always being goofy enough and silly enough and teasing enough that they can open up with you. And even sometimes play, playfully act intimate, but not actually go for intimacy. Then you're gonna have a situation where you're hot property. And if you're hot property and you're making really good 
uh, emotionally expressive friendships with a combination of different girls, that's when you're gonna start to have an incredible selection with really attractive chicks. Let's delve into that, that on the next location because, you know, it's a bloody mayhem out here. So far, I've laid out a whole lot of ideas and concepts and relevant factors to your dating game in your 30s and the experience that girls have, you know, as they go from young, curious, traveling adventurous into getting to a regular lifestyle, into the red carpet being rolled out, getting flown to Vegas, Ibiza, Mykonos, Thailand, Bali, wherever it might be. And then how do you then navigate that? If you're a guy living in Melbourne or Edinburgh or, or London here, and you're an average kind of guy, not the traditionally attractive type of guy, but you wanna meet more girls, here's what you do. If you, th this is what you do, right? And this is how to make it sustainable, and this is how I do it, and this is how I coach my, my clients to do it, the guys that I work with on the four-week natural. It is, it is okay to be a relationship type of guy. Not every guy has to be uh, the Russell Brand, rock star, one-night stand, uh, lover type of dude. You're also allowed to be the boyfriend or the provider. That works quite well. And you can have an incredible abundance if you are the boyfriend type of guy. If you, you, know, you have your job, you've got a nice apartment, you enjoy going to the gym, you're already ticking so many of the boxes. By the way, we're about to get a whole bunch of riot police coming through, so we'll just keep rolling. We'll just keep rolling, see what happens here. <laughs> Literally 100 riot police coming through. To swivel the camera real quick. Love it. <laughs> and back to me when you're ready. And back to me, sweet. And so your, your life is actually pretty comfortable. You've got your nest, you're, by, by the age of 30, you've got a little bit of, you know, as I said, that arrogance, that social confidence, that indifference, so that you can be comfortable going to those bars. Now, what you would do is you would go to some of the fanciest bars you can, buy nice shirts, hit the gym, look respectable in your, your environment, and befriend some of the cutest girls ever. The kind of game that we play is a don't let me stop you type of game. But at the same time, you can use the trinity the positive emotions, the negative emotions, and the, the sexual references or the, se the sexuality in the way that you express yourself, tastefully, of course. Um, and you can be the guy who's super social, who's taking the pressure off himself because he's not trying to game and attract and hit on all the girls that he's speaking to. And you're, you're understanding, you acknowledge them, you admire them, you uh, validate them. But of course, by, by that same token, you can call them out, you can challenge them, you can give them a bit of tough love, you can be playful, but you can be consistent and constant and popular. You can be average as a guy, but popular socially. And how do you do that? Be the kind of guy who's not trying to get attraction anywhere. Be the kind of guy who says to every attractive girl, don't let me stop you. Maybe you see them at the same bars or group of bars or events every weekend in your city. And then pretty naturally, if you're not going to alienate if you're not going to alienate any of these girls by being too aggressive or making a move or or being over the top eventually you're going to be going on weekend group trips with these types of girls and you're going to have your parties with these types of girls and you're going to uh, have after parties with these types of girls and what will happen is when you form these connections with accommodations of really pretty girls and you're not being a douchebag or arrogant or alienating them by rubbing them the wrong way or trying to get laid by all of them you're gonna be the nice guy and that's okay. You're gonna be the nice guy and you're gonna be hanging out and if you're always there and you present, you, you can make the girl laugh but you don't present the fear of she getting her heart broken by you. If you almost seem a little bit normal and a little, a little non-Captain America-ish, if you're a bit fat, if you're a bit short, if you're a bit average looking, she's gonna look at you and think, I like this guy, he makes me laugh, I love his company. I'm worried about losing his attention to another pretty girl and, and that guy wouldn't really break my heart because he's not the dream guy who I thought that I was gonna marry. You're starting to tick all of the boxes that that kind of girl is gonna really like. And it's gonna look, it's a lot different process to what you might have experienced in your 20s or 30s and it's a lot different process to what you might think an attraction type of game might be. So I, always, I will always remind you that familiarity, rapport, and comfort in one another's space is the thing that leads to compliance. It's the thing that, that's gonna lead to you and the girl wanting to be really comfortable in one another's space. A girl who's beautiful, who's super popular, 
who's being annoyed by douchebags and promoters and arrogant rich guys all the time who can always feel safe in your company, always be rewarded but never be controlled by your company, you're ticking all the boxes. You're doing all the things right and you have the constancy that a girl wants, the nest, the reliability. If you're popular and chill with a lot of other girls and guys and you know other people, you're ticking the box of a little bit fear of loss. But most importantly, she doesn't have a huge fear of being fucked over by you because you're not the kind of guy who looks stereotypically like a million girls are gonna throw themselves at you every weekend. You're not the Captain America stereotype. So as you can see here, it's a little counterintuitive to what you might have expected, but that's how it looks in your 30s. And it's actually really, really nice. There will come that moment where you're getting to know the girl over a course of you know, many weekends, social environments, hangouts. Make sure that you're you know, comfortable in one another's space. Intimate plus innocent. You're basically friend zoning the girl, so you're taking pressure off yourself and pressure off of her so that you can have a more open interaction between the two of you. And there's gonna come a time when it comes time to go for the makeout. You might be having a deep conversation about life, about negative past experiences, about hopes and dreams, about maybe you wanna have kids with somebody someday, you're sitting in isolation, eventually you're gonna to have to go for that make out. And the girl might think, this is not the type of guy that I normally go for. He doesn't look like Captain America. He's got the dad bod. He may not have a trust fund family or whatever, but internally, emotionally, she's gonna feel really, really warmly towards that kind of guy. And it's quite achievable. It's quite achievable. But you just need to know that it is realistic. You need to know that you don't lack attractiveness and your lack of attractiveness isn't holding you back because that's not the, the measuring stick by which you should evaluate how attractive you are. It's not about classical attractiveness, it's about not hurting herness, right? It's not hurting the girl as the thing that's gonna make uh, interactions with really beautiful girls in your 30s and 40s possible. That's the difference here that I really want you to understand and I see it happening all the time, guys who, don't have confidence in themselves because they don't look like Captain America or a bodybuilder or they don't have millions of dollars. And we work together and they realize that they have the ability to relax and have fun with and joke with and be close with beautiful girls, ticking all the boxes in a girl's set of requirements for a guy. And the girl does want intimacy. She does want to feel love. She does want to feel passion from a man. She wants, you know, a girl wants every, everything from one person and you can be that. And a girl loves the idea of a really incredible relationship, intimacy, but you gotta have that healthy balancing act that you are still confident and an easy guy to talk to to any other girl. And then, you know, of course, you remind your, your number one chick that you love her, she's the most special thing ever. But here you are, Mr. Dad Bod, Mr. Average Guy, able and capable to speak to really, really hot girls without any stress or pressure and not stopping them or not trying to control them. It's all starting to add up pretty well. We'll go to the next location because there's a lot more police coming over here. Get that in focus. Got it? <laughs> so you're told all of your life, basically, to be a nice guy, right? Don't hurt women, uh, don't be too much of a douchebag, but then you'll be frustrated all of your life because you see a whole lot of other more aggressive, douchey, unreliable type guys getting attention from girls and having fun with girls that you're simply not getting. But all of a sudden, what, you know, why should that change suddenly now because you're 30? Well, for that very reason. Um, I mean, like, if you, as a guy, you went to work for different companies and they promised you the world, but they broke your heart every time or they didn't pay you properly or the hours weren't what they expected, weren't what, weren't what you expected, um, and you went from job to job and you got hurt time after time, even though the jobs promised the world, you as an individual would be very happy to settle for a solid job that had a really great culture and community and was very engaging and very fulfilling, even though it wasn't you know, the dream job. You'd much prefer that rather than getting your heart broken and being let down. So that's, that's where the girl is coming from. Now, from you, the guy's point of view, a lot of people watching this channel are high achieving types of guys who believe in hard work and honor and stuff like that. So, if you have been working on getting a good apartment, working on your career, working on your body, understanding game and social dynamics, and you've built up all these you know, legitimate skill sets and, and virtues in your personality, you can then be almost a little bit 
uh, you can bait women to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I am what you're looking for. I can be everything to one girl. I've built myself for that, for the dream girl. I've built myself to be everything for the dream girl and I'm creating options for myself. I'm really good friends with that girl and that girl and that girl and that girl and these groups of chicks. And they're all really comfortable with me. They're all really in deep, friendly relationships with me. And you're making yourself scarce to some of your really attractive friends. And you can even discuss and allude to those ideas that you are the ideal partner, but you know, you're never gonna be shy when it comes to meeting other people. So you're striking that perfect balance uh, that will put a little bit of fear into the girl of losing a quality guy like you, and that's gonna make her take a chance on you. She's gonna take a chance on you. And if she takes the chance on you, reward that. If she does make out with you, agreed to go on a date with you, you know, show her a good time, extend yourself, open up, you know, uh, be passionate towards her, not in a desperate, needy, I've only got one chance with this hot girl kind of way. Uh, you, you know, you want to express yourself that now that you have a chance with her, hello police, or ambulance. Maybe they're like beating down protests over there, who knows. Um, now that you've got that chance that you're so appreciative that you've known her for so long, you know a lot of different girls like her, you've, you've, you've met many girls over your journey, and that you're so appreciative of who she is, what she's been through, how she's been hurt, um, how her expectations have been defied in the past, and now uh, you think that, she's, that you're best for her, that you're best for her, and that you're really proud to show her a good time, and this guy's just doing laps, just for fun, just to annoy our blog, anyway. So that, that's the thinking, that's the thinking. And this is really abundant thinking because you can have many, many options, many of these types of female friends, both in your home city, when you're traveling, through Tinder, through Hinge, through Instagram, all that kind of stuff. And you have a really, really busy social life, really almost like low level of difficulty, friendly, not being too impressive, not trying to buy them all these luxury goods and you know, promise them the world, because time is your ally. Time is your ally, it creates abundance, and abundance creates scarcity, and that's what triggers this whole dynamic of you having a really good selection of really attractive girls uh, who are in their professional lives, you know, 24 up until their 30s, for a guy like you who's in your 30s. So to wrap up, there's a certain type of confidence that happens to you only in your later 30s. And we define confidence as confidence happening when you perceive that nothing holds you back. So really, confidence comes from indifference. And confidence allows you to express yourself freely, be adventurous, chase new ventures, take new risks and things like that. Though girls, uh, girls that you might be interested in may not be as confident or their confidence might become more narrow as they get older and as they're more focused on the specific thing that, things that they want out of life. The more focused they are, the less, in, the less inclined they are to indulge risks. So your confidence as you become older in your late 20s and 30s, that, that state and that energy and that empowerment, that then can transfer to the people around you. So your confidence, your indifference, when you meet other girls who've got a more narrow sense of what they want out of life, you can then empower others by essentially being a leader and providing confidence to others. So it's uh, the law of state transfer is that your confidence will allow others, will bring the best out of others. So it's all about, you know, it's all about being a gentleman, uh, creating options for yourself, being nice to yourself, uh, and yeah, creating a little bit of a fear of loss by basically becoming popular by doing all the right things in a simple manner. Anyway, here we are in Piccadilly, wrapping up. We're, we're thinking about going as Peaky Blinders for Halloween. Got a cigar here for the street because why not? And uh, check out the good old YouTube channel. If there's other guys that you know that might benefit from this kind of content, these kind of ideas, by all means, share this YouTube channel to them so that they can think about learning and bettering their, their life, especially their dating life in their 20s and 30s. And have a good think about doing a four-week natural with me sometime in the future. 
on a yearly basis, I'm going to be in the cities of Koh Samui, Sydney, Austin, Oslo, Amsterdam, Havar, Croatia, Warsaw, Poland, uh, London, here we are, London, England, then New York, then Melbourne, on a yearly basis. So if you really do want to get your dating life handled, your dating, your, your confidence, your indifference, your ability to go out and meet a whole lot of women and for me to critique you and to teach you what you need to know to make your... To, to create abundance and to give you selectivity and to make girls fear losing you to other girls, do one of the four natural courses. It's me and you and a maximum of nine students, no assistance, none of that kind of rubbish. And we're going to be together for 33 days in a city like this, at least 26 contact days of coaching during the program. And it's basically me as your personal concierge helping you to make your game as good as it can possibly be, both there during that month and for the rest of your life following the program. Really nice to have this long conversation with you guys today. A big brain dump. Subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. By all means, leave a comment because I really love discussing these kind of ideas with you as I kind of quality check and verify and uh, ensure that I understand my ideas as well as possible before we put out these deeper concepts into the next Mastermind program in 2020. Alex here from The 4 Week Natural. I'll speak to you again soon.